Now let's take a look at roses. Now I'll tell you what, I get a lot of email on roses. A lot of people tend to get frustrated, but honestly, they're very easy to care for. But you do need to know some basic things that will ensure you're not gonna have problems with roses, or at least minimal controllable problems. Let's talk about these tea roses and let's talk about basics. Number one, most important thing, never ever overhead or shower water roses. Meaning, if you have pop-up sprinkler heads in this area with these roses, that water is gonna constantly be bombarding down on them. Roses are prone to leaf spot or black spot disease. So, when you start to get that disease and then you continue irrigating, number one, the overhead irrigation is gonna accentuate it, promote it, and many times induce it or cause it to be a problem. Now, you're gonna see the green leaves start to get brown or yellow spots or black spots. They're gonna turn yellow, they're gonna fall off. You're gonna get all upset and not know what the heck is going on. How do you get around that? Create your rose gardens away from overhead irrigation whether they're pop-up rotor heads or pop-up mist heads. Use drip irrigation, and that's easy. You can get those at any of your garden centers, Home Depot, Lowe's, professional garden centers. They're gonna have it. You take and attach your drip irrigation lines or weeping water hoses, if you will, hoses that will actually seep uh, water down here at the soil level. But don't overwater roses. Water them thoroughly daily, but do never overhead always down below drip irrigation number two properly fertilize with a balanced fertilizer roses feed heavy but they like light frequent amounts of fertilizers i would recommend also working in sand to help aerify the soil you want a good rich loam soil ideally if you're going to plant a rose garden kind of excavate out a lot of the existing soil and amend the soil. Bring in some quality soil and amend it with perlite and peat and so forth. Get your manures in there and then you can begin your synthetic fertilization process. Now, clipping and pruning, very important. When the roses are spent, always cut them back to an angle. Let me get my clipper out here and let me show you this. Once the rose has already done its blooming, it's over, that's fine. Go back to a split just before a bract, which has new leaf growth, cut it at an angle. Don't cut it flush. If you cut it flat, it's going to rot, there's going to be some decay. Cut it at an angle for moisture and water runoff so it will heal properly. Cut it right at an angle and you're going to be just fine. Now. There are certain periods of the year where you're going to have to take back a good third of the bush, the main canes. Now, these are young roses. You start seeing some dieback on some canes. Go back to the main trunk, pick your four, five, or six primary stems, strip all the leaves, strip everything off. Any dead woody area on the stems, cut it all the way back to where it's fresh, live again. Uh, if it's dry and dead, cut it off, get it out of there. Now, I want to talk to you about black spot. Now, you can do everything right and still have a disease issue. You need to get some products with, uh, let's say, systemic fungicides. You don't need to get crazy. About every six weeks, four to six weeks, just do a light application of a systemic fungicide. Now, systemic means it will cover the leaf surface, but yet permeate the leaf and be taken up into the system of the plant, into the branches and the leaves and so forth, giving you long-term residual disease control. When you spray, spray the top of the leaf. Be sure to take your sprayer and get up underneath the canopy and spray below.